Hey, I'm Patrick, manager of Greenfront in Raleigh, and I'm so excited to be here today for our premiere edition of GFTV. It's about all things local, hashtag local love. I've known you've seen that all over social media and on uh, local advertisements. Again, really excited apparently to be here with John Keener, the founder of Pine Top Distillery. Uh, it's over at Dock 1053. And if you missed it, we began this process of uh, really pushing home local organizations, local businesses, uh, soon to be local charities, um, just to really be supportive in this time. So while some of us are doing really well, there are other people in the community that are going through a tough time, especially our restaurants, our bars, and, um, and even charities to a certain degree. So um, please welcome today, John Keener, founder of Pine Top Distillery. Welcome, John. Yeah, Patrick, thank you so much for having us out today. Really appreciate the benefit of a local partnership with a great group like Green Front. Um, I think especially during these times, it's really important to partner with the other local neighbors to support the community and see what we can do to help everybody get through this. Um, so we appreciate the opportunity to show off the Pine Top product in a great environment like this one here at Green Front. And certainly I have some more thank yous to make. Uh, I met you originally as a customer and uh, in the midst of COVID, you really saved my skin with my wife by helping us get our couch delivered. I'm happy to report that it survived uh, well, despite having four children, two dogs. Um, it survived a couple of spills of a glass of wine thanks to the performance fabric we got. So things are working well. Wesley Hall with that signature line for the sectional sofa we got were great. And in particular, the cocktail chairs that we got from Precedent, my Jasper chairs, they're perfect for reclining and enjoying a cocktail despite the madness going on around our house uh, during COVID with everybody on top of each other. I was really happy to have that place to sit. First thing, especially like you said, for the dog days of summer, everybody knows a Moscow mule. Basically because ginger beer with liquor makes anything taste good. So what we have today, we're gonna do a slight riff on that Moscow Mule. It's called a Piney Mule, and it will include our unaged Bergman, what we call our moonshine. Super easy cocktail to make. We love having easy cocktails because anybody at home can make them. And that's the big important part. For this one, it's as simple as just having ice in a beautiful copper mug, but it needs to start with right about two ounces or more of some of our Pine Top Moonshine. So blend that right in, maybe add a little more to make yourself feel better. Then next ingredient is fresh lime. We try to get everything fresh, matches with the quality ingredients that we use from here. And again, we try to source everything from local North Carolina uh, granaries, our buddies down at Epiphany Malts in Durham, local uh, source for some great grain. That's primarily what we use in our liquor. The feature of this that resurrects any cocktail that might not taste perfect is obviously ginger beer. Just fill your glass with the ginger beer after that. More or less at a one part liquor, two part mixer, it always turns into a great cocktail. Now, if you wanna garnish this guy up, add the lime on the end and use some fresh mint. This I stole from my mother's garden this morning, so you can't get much more local than that. But that'll be a beautiful standard piney mule. If you want to kick it up one more notch, what I really like to play with is not just cranberry juice, but dark, tart cherry juice. Adds a lot of fun. You can put it in any cocktail. It also makes it a delightful pink color for those who care about what it looks like, even though you can't see it in the copper mug. This just makes it taste great. So a splash in here. Give it a swirl with the swizzle. Make sure that mint looks still beautiful in your glass. And you got a beautiful piney meal. So for this cocktail, we're gonna do another fun summer riff on a cocktail. There's a classic cocktail called a Southside Fizz, rumored to be Al Capone's favorite cocktail. The Southside is a reference to Southside of Chicago. But for us, because we're using a distinctly Southern liquor, we're gonna call it a Southern Fizz today. And it also is really simple. Grab your highball glass. Let's add a little bit to that martini glass to get it cold as well and ready for our cocktail. So obviously the first thing you need to start with is having your gin. Another two ounces or so. Be nice to yourself. Pour that guy right in there. Then we're gonna go lime and lemon this time. So take your fresh cut lemon, give it a squeeze of that in there. Give it a full bit of the lime as well. 
And then the last thing to add to cut some of that tartness is just a simple syrup. So let's go ahead, take another half ounce of that to add to it. That sweetens that guy up nicely. Pop it in our shaker. Get it nice and mixed. Crack those shakers, add it to the glass. And for this one, if you like a boozy, straightforward cocktail, drink it just like this. But to get the fizz in the Southern Fizz, it's where you bring out some soda water or seltzer. Anything with bubbles makes a great summer cocktail. Obviously, this is nice and fresh because it's all over my shirts. Add that, make it as pretty as you can with this. The other key to this is a nice smack of mint. Other than just looking really neat when you smack the mint, what you're trying to do is release the oils. You do the same thing with any herb that you're gonna to add to a cocktail. Releasing those essential oils into your cocktail is gonna give us a nice, beautiful hint of flavor that's gonna make you enjoy it even more. So there's our riff on the south side called the Southern Fizz. What we've done so far today is take some riffs on some classic cocktails. So just for giggles, we're gonna do that one more time. We're gonna do an Italian riff on a classic gin cocktail, which is a gimlet. And because it's a beautiful green color, I thought it'd be easy to just call it a green front gimlet. It rolls nicely off the tongue. Now, to make this drink, it starts out really the same way as what we've done before, except we get to use that great fresh herb. I know anybody with a basil plant's having it explode right now in the middle of the summer. All it does is you start with about four leaves of basil, give it a good muddle. And when you muddle, you don't wanna shred the thing, just push on it. Cause just like in the other cocktails we make, I just want the essential oils to come out of that basil. So just give it a nice press and that's all there is to it. Make sure it stays in there though, cause that's where all my flavor comes from. After that, let's add some ice to my shaker. And while we're at it with the ice, Let's add a little bit to that martini glass to get it cold as well and start making a gimlet. Now, what makes a gimlet a gimlet is the lime juice you add to it. So as you can see, I've just gotten rid of the jigger at this point. We're just pouring in the gin nice and free. About two ounces of gin is what you wanna put in there. And then after that, we go back and we wanna give about three quarters of an ounce of fresh squeezed lime juice in there as well. And that usually ends up being about a half ounce per half of your lime will come out. So we'll just give this one a gentle squeeze and it'll be a beautiful gimlet. Then give it a good toss. From there, give it a little crack, separate them out. Our nice pre-chilled glass. gets the gimlet up. What we can do is garnish that with one more beautiful leaf of basil. And then Patrick, you can enjoy a beautiful green front gimlet. Thank y'all for joining us today for our premiere issue of GFTV and I look forward to seeing you again next month for another bit of local love. And with that said, thank you John Keener. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.